Hi guys, finally arrived at uh, our destination, Ostsjön, around uh, three kilometers from, uh, from the parking lot, an hour's drive north of Oslo, and uh, this is a popular summer place. We're not in the middle of nowhere, there's a few cabins here, but uh, in the winter time there's no one here and it's uh, close enough uh, and it's way long enough uh, hike for my five-year-old so it's a good start so I'm about uh, setting up uh, the camp I'm prepping the base for the tent just leveling it out a little bit uh, and uh, we're gonna put up uh, Put up the tent and then uh, gather some firewood for tonight. And uh, it's us boys, you know, Jonathan and me. It's gonna be good times and uh, I'm glad you're along with us. I got the base leveled out, uh, ready to set up the tent. It's a... Um, it's a Bergans Viglo. It's a combination of a dome tent and a lavu. So it brings, tries to bring the benefit of both uh, those into one, giving good height as well as good uh, view. Uh, and um, it's uh, it's a four-man tent. Uh, so I really really enjoyed it. Uh, it's been used uh, this summer and uh, I think it's a fantastic solution and uh, light enough to carry for these uh, small trips. So we had to start using these uh, small ones. Yes? Yes, for you. Yeah. Well, so here well. goes the tent up. Come here, new motor. And on Bye bye. Okay. So the tent is up, the weather forecast is quite nice, so I'm not going to peg down the entire tent, but I'm going to uh, put some snow on the, the storm, stormklappene. I, well, actually I'm getting Jonathan to do that. And just uh, simply to peg it down uh, even further. So all the way down here, there is this uh, extra stormklapp. Like that. Fantastic, you know, really bra. Okay. And uh, that helps uh, the tent keep stable uh, if uh, wind uh, blows up. Now we're in a valley here uh, in this uh, small ah. lake. It's surrounded by uh, uh, surrounded by some small cliffs. Uh, not cliffs, but well, yeah, small valley. So, there's not going to be any major, major wind here. Look at that. Isn't it very fantastic? That's a for thing to not done. Amazing. <laughs> All right. So, finally got into the tent. Uh, Jonathan wanted to play more than uh, getting firewood, so that's what we did. <laughs> That's how it is to have kids. This is, uh, this is a trip that is on his terms and uh, I'm having a fantastic time. So it ended up uh, with no wood, no fire today. So we'll do that tomorrow. But uh, we got into the tent, got into the sleeping bags, good down feet, uh, these uh, tent slippers. Uh, and uh, we got some reindeer hive. Uh, on the very bottom here, uh, and then uh, and the XP um, uh, sleeping mat, uh, and then the, the sleeping bag. I'll show you the entire setup tomorrow. So, but uh, now it's uh, dinner time, so we're just uh, cooking some uh, easy food on the on the stove, and uh, we're having a good time. That's it. It's fantastic. It's uh, minus 12 degrees, uh, from what I could say. So it's not uh, extremely cold. 
it's uh, probably gonna be two three Celsius uh, more or less around minus 15 uh, tonight I think so we're having a good time catch you tomorrow morning so we woke up after a good night's sleep warm and good uh, just had a pee break with the kid and uh, going to get some uh, some water boiling now there's a we could of course uh, melt snow but uh, there's an easier option uh, right here because there's a small creek which is open so I'm saving some time uh, instead of melting all that water I can just uh, melting all that snow I can just go pick up the water easy peasy full bucket that's it Just gonna grab some breakfast and then uh, we're gonna test some ice fishing. There's uh, some trout here, so some wild brown, so hopefully we'll catch lunch. It's time for some ice fishing. I know Jonathan has been bugging me since yesterday because uh, it got too dark to, to do some fishing. So, but now, the light's here. We've had our breakfast. Got some good canteens of uh, hot water. So we're ready to start uh, catching some lunch, probably, or not probably, hopefully. Uh, don't know much about this water. Never been here before, actually. Uh, what I do know is that there are uh, wild uh, and stocked uh, brown trout here and um, uh, I have some uh, some maggots and uh, some really really simple uh, ice fishing gear some uh, pimples and some mumushka and uh, hopefully that will do the trick uh, so if not we got the, this entire place for ourselves and uh, I'm quite sure that Jonathan's gonna head up into those woods and uh, start uh, playing. So it's good times. It's good times being out here. Uh, it's um, around uh, 12 minus Celsius. So it's been kind of stable uh, the last uh, 24 hours. And um, uh, it's just beautiful, man. It's it's. Uh, Fantastic. It's not a sound. There's no one out here and uh, I know a lot of people in Norway do cross-country skiing and uh, We followed the trail for, for, for a while and then we took off after a few kilometers and uh, ended up here and there's not a single soul There's nobody here All I can hear is the birds and small small flakes of snow that hits the tent roof and uh, the sound of the snow crunching when you walk on it it's fantastic so I know that was the emotional part now over to the fishing <laughs> I've been uh, putting up the fishing tackle setting it up it's uh, quite easy uh, equipment it's a small rod very small carbon fiber rod uh, and you can pick this up at any fishing tackle shop I assume or at least here in Norway uh, 
a small spool, uh, a reel of uh, a thousand class, and uh, 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 a line that uh, that uh, will survive the cold uh, weather and uh, some rubbing against uh, the ice uh, if we catch a fish. Uh, and if there is a decent size on the fish, it could tend to kind of swirl around in the hole a bit. And then it's good to have uh, some leader of some sort to take off the shock. Anyhow, in the end, I have uh, just uh, a few uh, le uh, few leads, a couple of grams there, perhaps, and a size. Uh, this is a size uh, 16 hook and uh, I'll just uh, simply use some uh, maggots um, for bait and that's it I've kept the maggots um, uh, close to my body to, to, to keep it, the heat uh, going uh, if not they will freeze uh, I forgot to do that with one of the maggot uh, boxes so I have a red one where all are dead but uh, that's not too bad actually because uh, I usually use a mix of uh, both uh, live maggots and dead maggots so but uh, it's a good tip to to keep things uh, live bait of course uh, you need you need to keep them alive uh, including worms I, I, I could use worms as well but uh, this is it another thing when ice fishing is uh, I always uh, do, uh, drill some test holes uh, first of all to check the check the, uh, uh, the thickness of the ice uh, with the, this layer of snow here you can be tricked uh, one because you don't see where uh, small creeks or rivers uh, can come in and out of uh, this lake uh, and so it can, it can be quite a bit of variation of the thickness so I always always do, uh, do some uh, tests and I always use uh, this as a minimum safety gear. It's got a whistle on it and it got uh, two spikes. So if I fell through, I will uh, be able to get up quite easily. Reading the lake, that where to ice fish is, I haven't been here before, so I'm not familiar with this lake. Um, it's a small lake. Uh, I usually look for uh, I, I use the internet to see uh, see, see maps. There, there's no depth charts uh, for inland lakes in Norway, uh, at least not the small ones. There are for quite a, a few of the big ones, but this is a small, small lake, one of the 200,000 small lakes we have here. And therefore, uh, I don't know where there's the, the habitat for the fish is best. Um, and just by reading uh, <laughs> the surface like this, it's quite impossible, but what what you should look after look out for is uh, kind of uh, narrow uh, edges. Uh, if there's an island, uh, maybe around the island, uh, creeks uh, uh, where you have a small creek coming in or maybe going out. But be careful about the ice there. Uh, but that's places where. Uh, uh, food is uh, coming because there's flowing water or uh, maybe uh, find some branches uh, along the edge that's also usually a place where you have dead wood standing out in the water that could be a good hiding spot uh, for fish uh, or you have some of course now we, we have no idea to see or to test for big rocks uh, but that's also good places uh, so I'm kind of just going along here and uh, for, for, for perch I would be drilling and drilling and drilling and trying to hunt down uh, the, the school of uh, perch but for trout, wild, uh, wild brown trout, they're, they're kind of not hibernating but they're really really slow in the winter time. Uh, it's hard fish to get in uh, winter time so I'm going to put out two rods uh, for, um, for them and uh, uh, fish actively with the third one, which is a small momishka one. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna 
let it sink all the way to the bottom. It's not very deep here and uh, I've got very light tackle so it's only a couple of grams of lead there. Um, I reckon maybe there's 10 meters here at tops. Maybe not even that. It's hard to read from the topography of this lake. But it's not very steep. No. Uh, and uh, the line is a bit too thick for this actually, but uh, anyway. Yeah. Stop. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Har du fått fisk? You caught a fish. Are you for night? Are you glad? Yeah. Very glad, ah. Dafra, dafra. Tusen. No. Million. Million. Look at that beautiful trout. Fell. I'm so excited. Jeg er så stolt av deg, Jonathan. Du fikk fisk, du. Nei, jeg er ikke Jonathan. Jeg er konge. Er du konge? Vel, kongen, du har fått fisk. Har, har pappa fått fisk? Nei. <laughs> Nei. Just wanted to show you my tent setup. It's uh, suitable for four people and it's got a good height uh, so you can almost stand in it and um, gives a good good room uh, sensation. I'm never uh, too reliant on very warm tents. Uh, I let my sleeping gear do the trick and uh, having good clothing and layered clothing. So I don't need a uh, small and low dome tent or stuff like that. So we tried this uh, Bergans Viglo uh, and I've been using it for a year and it's a fantastic tent. Uh, it weighs quite a bit, it's six kilos, so it's not a, it's not a hiking tent, uh, but it's for bringing kids and the family, it's fantastic. So this is how it looks inside. Let's see here. Yeah. As you see, I have a, a reindeer uh, hive for the for the base, um, and then uh, this uh, this is just a transport bag. Uh, and then we got uh, on top of that, we got an X-speed uh, down mat, which is uh, really really nice. Um, and this bag is Jonathan's. He's got two bags, actually, uh, two in one. He's a regular three season uh, uh, Alta Junior Flex from Hellsport. And then I put him into the Mrs. sleeping bag, which is also a great sleeping bag, Huldre Heimen. So uh, he is really nice and comfortable in that in uh, minus 15. So same setup here, reindeer hive in the end, in the bottom, and uh, X-Speed uh, down mat. And I got a Mammoth uh, Denali uh, Expedition here, which is uh, 
comfort temperature down to minus 35 degrees Celsius. So it's a bit overkill. Um, but I'm testing it as I'm going to uh, the Finnmark Plateau later this winter. And uh, the temperature there can easily drop down to minus 30 to 40. Uh, so this is it. Uh, this is the entire bag that's on the sled. Just carry that in. And uh, the kitchen is over there. Uh, this tent has uh, three exits. Two on each side, one there and uh, one there. And this big entrance uh, that I'm sitting in now. The ventilation uh, in winter time is solely up there. But it's big. Uh, three exits. If you look, here's the big, big exit. And all of this front area can uh, be opened up. Uh, now that we have uh, put snow on the snow clefts, all the ventilation is uh, coming through these three of these uh, big uh, ventilation holes on the top here, which is more than enough. But it's very important to regulate ventilation in winter time to get the condensation out. Anyhow, this is uh, this is the tent. It's it's big. It's good. It got good insulation, good space, good height. Uh, it got uh, mesh for uh, all your small stuff during the night in all the sides. You got three exits, so when everyone's gotta go <laughs> in <laughs> nature calls, uh, you don't have to rely on waking up everybody inside the tent. You can just sneak out, and uh, it's a really really nice tent. I haven't tested it in um, in the very very windy conditions. But uh, I know this tent has been used for an expedition um, very far south and uh, in some extreme conditions. And they get, gave it thumbs up, so hopefully it's gonna be good to us on uh, the Finnmark Plateau in uh, about a month and a half. So this is it! We are extremely thankful uh, for you watching us being outdoors. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Jonathan had a blast, so did I. Uh, for you spending time on the web watching this, and uh, yeah, it means a lot. So, if you enjoyed it, give us a thumbs up, or if you have any questions, or anything you're wondering about, or a comment to whatever you've seen, uh, leave a comment just below. And uh, if you hit subscribe, you'll get an email uh, when we have uh, released our next video. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hi there. Cha cha.